My name is Larry Principe. I'm a professor of the History of Science and Technology and a professor of chemistry at Johns Hopkins University. This is my lab where I do alchemical experiments, that is, try to reproduce the uh, results and the experiments that were done by alchemists in the 15th, 16th, and 17th centuries. Well, one of the things I like to do most is to get into an archive and look for manuscripts, particularly manuscripts that people haven't looked at in a very long time, things that might give me some kind of insider's view on what the characters I'm interested in learning about were really doing. So one of the things that I did some years ago was to look at the papers of Robert Boyle. One of the things that I discovered in his papers was a huge amount of work on trying to make the Philosopher's Stone and transmute base metals into gold. Uh, the result of that was I, I wrote a book on, on Boyle uh, and his alchemical quest, uh, which gives us now a very different view of this, this famous English scientist, uh, shows him more in his context and what he was, himself was really interested in doing. A lot of what I'm involved in is trying to get a better understanding of what alchemy was and what alchemists actually did. This has always been a problem, however, because the texts that they've left us are very secretive. They're often highly metaphorical, they're written in a kind of code, and they're filled with extravagant imagery, often very beautiful woodcuts, but forbidding in the sense of what does it all mean? So, Alchemists adapted the way they wrote to be more secretive. They tended to write under false names. They attributed their writings to people who were safely dead. And they tended to write in code. They would rarely list the clear name of some substance that they were using. So let me give you an example. If an alchemist were using what he would call uh, salomoniac, or what we would nowadays call ammonium chloride, we know that it's a white, volatile salt. Instead of calling it salomoniac, for example, he might call it the white eagle, because an eagle flies just the way the salt volatilizes. Similarly, if you were talking about, let's say, nitric acid, rather than calling it spirit of saltpeter or something that would be more easy to understand, he might instead call it red dragon. Well, why? Well, because if you heat up nitric acid, you get these red vapors, so there's the red part. It essentially breathes fire, this corrosive material, that uh, there's corrosive vapors that would come out of it on heating, and it's ravenous. It devours everything in its path, just the way a dragon would do. So, for example, if we wanted to make aqua regia, a solvent that's able to dissolve gold, today we could take nitric acid and put ammonium chloride in it and make that solvent, but an alchemist might describe it as say, uh, might describe it by saying, let the red dragon devour the white eagle. Or, rather than saying it in words, he could draw an image of an actual dragon devouring an eagle.